हेलो वी स्टार्ट चैप्टर ट्रांसमिशन लाइन एंड वी हैव फिनिश दिस टॉपिक ट्रांसमिशन लाइन पैरामीटर इक्वेशन ऑफ वोल्टेज एंड करंट ऑन ट्रांसमिशन लाइन देन आफ्टर वी हैव आल्सो डिराइव द इक्वेशन ऑफ प्रोपोगेशन कांस्टेंट एंड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इंपीडेंस ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन नाउ इन एंड वी आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन लॉसलेस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन एंड डिस्टर्शंसलेस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन ओके so in today lecture we will derive the equation of input impedance of transmission line and then after in next lecture we will discuss about reflection coefficient and vswr so in today lecture what we have discussed we will discuss about the input impedance of transmission line so first has we know that what is transmission line so transmission line is nothing but it is two parallel conductor which is separated by dielectric material it is known as transmission line and transmission line is used to propagate transverse electromagnetic wave okay and there are the two types of the transmission line lossless transmission line and distortionless transmission line so in today lecture we discuss about the input impedance of transmission line okay so how to find out input impedance of transmission line so first of all we have discussed about what is input impedance of transmission line why it is important what is the application to find out the or the, what is the requirement to find out the input impedance of any transmission line okay so as we know that transmission line is nothing but there are the two parallel wire okay the two parallel conductor so to draw a two parallel conductor which offers very high conductivity and it is separated by the dielectric medium okay so here, here are the two parallel conductor now i have to connect generator okay so for example here it is source it is nothing but vg generator source and whatever the impedance offered by the generator it is denoted as zg zg is internal impedance of this generator okay so generator is connected at the input side of the transmission line and at the output side i have to connect a lower impedance okay so this is zl so whatever the current is flow through this load impedance we have to say that it's a load current okay and similarly here whatever the current is known as is a generator current or you can say that it is io current If I have to write I/O current. We will discuss about it. Okay, and uh, whatever the voltage is developed across this load impedance, which is known as ZL. Now here we have to define the length of the transmission line is L. The total length of transmission line is L. Okay, so here suppose I have to represent this Z axis. So this point is Z is equals to zero, and this point is Z is equals to L. okay so intrinsic impedance okay you can say that the intrinsic impedance is distributed over the transmission line now we have to measure the input impedance okay so first of all what is intrinsic impedance so intrinsic impedance is sorry characteristic impedance is z0 is equals to under root of r plus j omega l upon g plus j omega c it is known as characteristics impedance of transmission line and this characteristics impedance is distributed okay it is distributed over the transmission line so this transmission line has some characteristics impedance which is known as z0 but in this uh, question so we have to find out the input impedance of the transmission line second thing is this transmission line has a some propagation constant which is known as gamma and the equation of gamma is r plus g omega l g plus g omega c okay so this transmission line has a two parameter first is this transmission line contains z0 and second this transmission line contains propagation constant gamma now we have to measure the input impedance from this side of course okay see it is known as the input impedance so of course we have to measure from the input side so it's a input impedance so i have to measure from this side so it is known as input impedance of the transmission line set in 
okay now so here you can measure the input impedance from z is equals to 0 you can measure the input impedance from at which point z is equals to l you can measure the input impedance from z is equals to l by 2 from z is equals to l by 4 from z is equals to at any distance okay from at any point you can measure the value of input impedance of transmission line and the value are different okay so this input impedance is depend on what this input impedance is depend on the characteristics impedance of transmission line also see these two are the different thing the characteristics impedance of transmission line and the input impedance these these two are the different thing okay so keep it in mind input impedance is different okay so say when you do the calculation for the input impedance so i have to i have to uh, observe only this portion okay so if you measure the input impedance so uh, which things are come into the picture z0 gamma and zl okay this load impedance is also included in the equation of input impedance okay so if you measure the input impedance okay so actually we have to write the uh, or we have to uh, we will calculate the equation of the input or we have to derive the equation of the input impedance in terms of z0 in terms of gamma and in terms of zl zl is the external load resistor that we have to connect with our transmission line what is z0 z0 is the characteristic impedance and it depends on what it depends on this parameter r l j and c okay but what is z in z in it's the input impedance that we have to see from at each and every point okay here i have to draw this line that means i have to measure the impedance from at which side at z is equals to zero point i have to see the input impedance okay suppose for example if this one so it's also known as input impedance okay and so for example this point is uh, z is equals to something like that l by uh, it's not half but it's more than half so it is uh, point point eight times okay clear so this is point eight times l you can say so this is a 10 l by 8 okay so this is a or 8 by okay sorry point eight point eight l okay that means at each and every point you can measure the input impedance of the transmission line so in the equation of input impedance it includes z0 gamma and z because the input impedance is depend on what the input impedance is depend on the characteristic impedance propagation constant and load impedance also clear okay so whatever the voltage is developed at this point initially it is known as v0 voltage it's not a output voltage keep in mind it's not a output voltage a v0 voltage between these two point okay the, uh, and this one is my load voltage and this one is a generator okay so we can say that this one is my source is a source okay and here it is load okay so now let us start to derive the equation of, of input impedance so as we know that in the last lecture we have to derive the equation of voltage and current the equation of voltage is v of z is equals to v0 plus e raised to minus gamma z plus v0 minus e raised to gamma z we derive this equation in our last video lecture okay similarly what is i of z i of z is i of 0 e raised to minus gamma z plus i0 minus e raised to plus gamma z okay but as we know that the characteristic impedance is nothing but it is v0 plus by i0 plus or you can say that it is minus of v0 minus upon i0 minus okay so i have to just rewrite the current equation in this way I of z is equals to I of 0 e raised to minus gamma z and sorry this uh, okay I have to write in terms of this so this v of 0 by z okay v0 plus okay so what is i0 plus i0 plus is equals to v0 plus by z0 minus now it is i0 minus so i0 minus is equals to minus v0 minus divided by z0 e raised to gamma z okay so i will get the two equation equation number one and equation number two which is a function of z function of z means what is z actually z is actually i have to consider this as z axis 
okay and it's a length of my line which is starting from z is equals to 0 to z is equals to l okay see this z is not impedance keep in mind okay this z is not a impedance but it's a z axis that i have to consider my line on the z axis so what is the total length of line the total length of line is l okay so here is a starting point of line and this one is the ending point of line. So, Z is equal to 0 to Z is equal to L. So, it's a Z axis. Similarly, this one is also Z. Okay, that means it's Z axis. It indicates the axis length of line. Okay, but what this Z is 0 is a characteristic impedance. Clear? Okay, so at Z is equal to 0. Okay, if you see here at Z is equal to 0, what is the voltage? Voltage is V0 and at Z is equal to 0, what is the current? The current is I zero. Okay, so I have to apply the condition. It's not the, the the boundary condition. Okay, so we can write at Z is equals to zero. Voltage V is equals to V zero, and the current I is equals to I zero. So I have to put all this value in our equation one and equation two, and put Z is equals to zero. So E raised to zero one. E raised to 0 1 okay similarly here z is equal to 0 z is okay so the equation is v 0 is equal to okay this v of z becomes v 0 because v is equal to v 0 so this v 0 is equal to v 0 plus plus v 0 minus okay this v 0 plus put z is equal to 0 e raised to 0 1 plus v 0 minus put z is equal to 0 so e raised to 0 is 1 okay similarly i have to put the value of z is equal to 0 in the second equation so the the respective current is i 0 is equal to it is v 0 plus by z 0 okay so v 0 plus by z 0 minus v 0 minus by z 0 okay so i'll get this equation at the boundary condition so I can write this equation in this way the second equation v0 plus minus v0 minus is equals to i0 zero, zero, zero. so I have two equation first this is equation a and this one is equation b okay now to just do the addition of these two equation okay so do addition of these two equation a plus b okay so if you do the addition okay so this 2 v0 plus is equal because ultimately we want v0 plus equation and v0 minus equation okay so this v0 plus i0 zero, zero, 0 so what is v0 plus v0 plus is equal to half v0 plus i0 into zero, 0 clear uh, see here uh, what is the meaning of v0 plus and what is the meaning of v0 minus that we have already discussed in our last video lecture okay so if you still confused about what is v0 plus and v0 minus so i recommended to see my last video lecture so you will clear or you get the clear idea regarding what is v0 plus and v0 minus okay so i'll get this equation for v0 plus similarly how to put the equation okay we will get the equation for v0 minus so v0 minus is equal to 1 by 2 half v0 minus i0 sorry, sorry. okay so i will get the equation of v0 plus and v0 minus at uh, which condition the condition is at z is equal to 0 i have to get this equation okay so <coughs> now so this one is the value of voltage and current at one point of the transmission line which is z is equal to 0 okay same will get the equation of voltage and current at the second end of the transmission line which is z is equal to l okay so next calculation at z is equal to l okay so at z is equal to l what is v v is nothing but this v l okay v is nothing but this v l so we'll get here this v l okay so at z is equals to l v is equals to v l and what is i i is equals to i l load current okay so i is equals to i l now to put this value into equation one and equation two okay 
so my equation one okay uh, see this one is my equation one okay this one I have to put this value in equation one and equation two okay so v l is equals to v of z at z is equals to l it is v l is equals to v zero plus e raised to minus gamma z but z is l so gamma l plus v zero minus e raised to plus gamma l okay and the current equation is i l is equals to v zero plus by cell zero e raised to minus gamma l plus v zero minus by cell zero e raised to plus gamma l okay so again i have to get two equation equation c and equation d okay so now what i have to do i have to <coughs> just do the addition of these two equation okay so uh, from this equation i can write this equation in this way it is uh, nothing but i l cell zero is equals to v zero plus e raised to minus gamma l plus v zero minus e raised to plus gamma l okay so this one is my equation number d now i'll do just addition of equation c and equation d okay so if you do the addition and we have to find out the value of v0 plus and v0 minus here at each and every point at z is equals to 0 and at z is equals to l what we have to find out we have to find out the value of v0 plus and v0 minus so at each and every point on the transmission what we have to do we have to find out the value of v0 plus and v0 minus because ultimately we have to find out the input impedance and we know that what is the impedance impedance is equals to v by r so that is why it is required to find out v0 plus and i0 plus or you can find out v0 minus and i0 minus okay so here the input impedance is uh, the input impedance at any point on the transmission line is the ratio of v0 plus divided by i0 plus or v0 minus upon i0 minus okay so but at any point okay that means it depends on l also clear it, it depends on the length of the transmission line also okay so now what i have to do i will just do the addition of equation c and d okay so if you do the addition of equation c and d so you'll get the value of v0 plus is 1 by 2 vl plus z0 il e raised to gamma l okay you can do this addition by yourself it's very easy okay so nothing, so no, nothing is difficult to add this two equation and v0 minus is 1 by 2 vl minus z0 il e raised to minus gamma l okay so we'll get this two equation okay and these two equations are important for us okay now next now we come to our main point that we have to find out input impedance at any point on the transmission line now we have to find out the input impedance at any point on the transmission line okay so next we find out the input impedance which is z in at any point on the transmission line which is v of z by i of z because what is z z is the length of the transmission line so input impedance is a function of the transmission line okay so at the generator okay at the generator side at the generator side means at this side at the generator side okay that means at a z is equals to zero so it is known as generator side at the load side means z is equals to L, it is known as load side so at the generator side z in is equals to v of 0 by i of 0 okay so here you have to put v of 0 so this v0 plus plus v0 minus so this v0 plus plus v0 minus divided by i0 plus okay 
सो आई ऑफ जीरो इज इक्वल टू वी जीरो प्लस बाई जेर जीरो माइनस वी जीरो माइनस बाई जेर जीरो सो इट इज वी जीरो प्लस बाई जेर जीरो अपॉन वी जीरो माइनस बाई जेर जीरो सो यू कैन राइट इन दिस वे सो जेर इन इज इक्व टू जेर जीरो इन द ब्रैकेट इट इज वी जीरो प्लस माइनस वी जीरो माइनस अपॉन वी जीरो प्लस इट इज प्लस माइनस वी जीरो माइनस ओके सो दिस द इक्वेशन ऑफ जेड इन ओके द इनपुट इम्पिडेंस इट्स अ जनरलाइज इक्वेशन नाउ वी हैव टू सेपरेटली फाइंड फर्स्ट व्हाट इज द एडिशन ऑफ वी जीरो प्लस प्लस वी जीरो माइनस एंड देन वी हैव टू फाइंड व्हाट इज द सब्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ दिस टू वोल्टेज एट एनी पॉइंट ऑन द लाइन ओके सो बिफोर डिस्कसिंग दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू क्लियर सम simple mathematics which is based on the trigonometric function okay so first of all we have to clear the simple mathematics uh, the mathematics say that cos theta cos theta is equals to e raised to j theta plus e raised to minus j theta by 2 what is sin theta sin theta is e raised to j theta minus e raised to minus j theta by 2j okay now important is what is cos h theta hybrid function e raised to theta plus e raised to minus theta by 2 what is sin h theta hybrid of sin is e raised to theta minus e raised to minus theta by 2 okay next what is cos h i theta okay See, it is i theta, so this uh, e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta by two. It is nothing but cos theta. Okay, so you can say that cos h i theta is equal to cos theta. And what is sin h i theta? Sin h i theta is e raised to i theta minus e raised to minus i theta by two. Okay, so it is nothing but my uh i sin theta okay because here the j or i or j okay because here the j term is absent okay so this j sin theta so these are the equations okay so do the... we know these equations so now we have to derive the equation for what is v0 plus plus v0 minus and v0 plus minus v0 minus at any distance on the transmission line okay so we have to consider this one these two equation v0 plus and v0 minus now to do the addition of these two equation first and then after we do the subtraction of these two equation okay so first we do the addition of these two equation okay so let us do the addition okay so this one is my important equation that we have to use okay now just we do the addition of these two equation v0 plus plus v0 minus okay so let us do the addition v0 plus plus v0 minus so here i will do the simple addition of this two equation so do the addition so it is and uh, vl is equals to what is load voltage load voltage vl is equals to ir into zl okay so it is 1 by 2 vl is equals to il zl plus First, I'll write this one: Z zero I L e raised to gamma L plus plus this equation one by two V L is I L Z L minus Z zero I L e raised to minus gamma L. Okay, so now I have to take. Which quantity is a common? I L is a common, so I have to take outside it. So it is I L by two. So in the bracket, it is Z L plus Z zero e raised to gamma L. Okay. I use this two equation plus Z L minus Z zero e raised to minus gamma L. Now how to rearrange this equation? Okay, Z L e raised to gamma L plus Z L e raised to minus gamma L. Then Z zero e raised to gamma L minus Z zero e raised to minus gamma L. Then how to use 
this trigonometric function okay so v0 plus plus v0 minus is equals to il by 2 okay, it takes some time so just a simple mathematics zl is the common insert the bracket it is e raised to gamma l plus e raised to minus gamma l okay plus z0 is common insert the bracket e raised to gamma l minus e raised to minus gamma l okay and these two e okay i will take these two inside the bracket so i have to cancel from this side okay so e raised to gamma l plus e raised to minus gamma l by 2 it is nothing but e raised to theta plus e raised to minus theta by 2 so it is cos h theta so this one is cos gamma l cos h gamma l okay so it is i l in the bracket z l cos h gamma l plus z zero sin h gamma l okay so first we got v0 plus plus v0 minus okay now we do the calculation for v0 plus minus v0 of minus okay so now next calculation for v0 plus minus v0 minus okay so do the do this calculation so if you do the calculation for this i want to di directly write it okay so you can do by your, yourself it's very easy so this il in the bracket it is zl here it is sin h gamma l plus z0 cos h gamma l okay so we'll get this two equation for v0 plus plus v0 minus v0 minus minus v0 minus i have to substitute into the my main equation of z0 okay so if i have to substitute it in my main equation of z in okay so it is z in is equals to z0 z0 in the bracket v0 plus plus v0 minus divided by v0 plus minus v0 minus so how to just uh, do okay so this term divided by this term so it's just a division so il il is cancelled out so here it is zl cos h gamma l plus z0 sin h gamma l divided by zl sin h gamma l plus z0 cos h gamma l okay so how to take cos h gamma l as a constant term oh sorry uh, i will take outside so or i have to divide denominator or denominator and numerator with cos h gamma l i have to divide it with cos h gamma l so this said l z zero sine by cos so this is tan h gamma l divided by it is uh, i will write this z zero first z zero plus z l tan h gamma l okay so this one is the equation of z in input impedance okay so has i would say earlier the input impedance is depend on what i would say earlier the input impedance is depend on z0 it depends on gamma and it depends on zl also okay so input impedance is depend on z0 it depends on zl and it also depend on gamma okay so you can measure the input impedance at at each and every point on the transmission line your answer is different at each and every point on the transmission line now next is now next what is gamma gamma is known as the propagation constant okay which is r plus g omega l g plus g omega c and it is nothing but alpha plus 
j beta where alpha is known as attenuation constant and beta is known as phase constant okay but if my line is lossless line if line is lossless line lossless line, line means there is no power loss throughout the line so it is known as lossless line so for lossless lossless line value of alpha is zero so in that case gamma is equals to j beta okay gamma is equals to j beta okay so if gamma is equals to j beta so what is tan h gamma l so this tan h j beta l so this tan j beta h l okay clear so this uh, uh, see again is a mathematics the mathematics the mathematics say that here uh, tan j h theta is equals to j tan theta okay so this one is nothing but j tan beta l okay so how to put this value here for the lossless line so for the lossless line the input impedance z in is equals to z0 in the bracket z l plus j z0 tan beta l divided by z0 plus j z l tan beta l okay so this one is the final equation of input impedance that we have seen from the generator side okay or the input impedance of your transmission line but the transmission line is lossless transmission line okay so this one is a standard equation so here the term beta l is known as electrical length of transmission line why so see what is beta l beta is nothing but by 2 pi by lambda into l okay now the transmission line is depend on the wavelength okay the length of the transmission line is depend on the wavelength of the wave okay so in some cases the length of transmission line should be lambda by 2 it may be lambda it may be lambda by 4 it may be lambda by 8 okay so depending on the on the length of the transmission line we will get the value of beta l and what is beta l beta l is, is known as electrical length of line okay this known as electrical length of transmission line okay so is a one type of the short question uh, what do you mean by the beta l okay or or the uh, what is the name of beta into l so beta l is known as the electrical length of the transmission line clear okay so if you know the uh, electrical length of the transmission line so you can easily find out the value of input impedance okay so we have stopped here so in next lecture we will find out what is a reflection coefficient so there are the two types of the reflection coefficient voltage reflection coefficient and current reflection coefficient and then we will discuss about the vswr that is voltage standing wave ratio thank you